I believe that, you know, the, the, the question of a bubble gets asked a lot. Uh, and I actually wrote a post on Medium a few weeks ago uh, addressing that. And, and what I did was I looked at, at Amazon. And, you know, I really believe that crypto, and when I say crypto, I mean uh, the blockchain, cryptocurrency, smart contracts, and decentralization, that this is the biggest thing to happen in mankind. And it doesn't mean that we don't get ahead of ourselves. But if you take a look at the chart for Amazon, uh, uh, from 97 to 99, it was up 70x. From 90, if you stretch that out two more years, it's violent up and then down 95%. And if you stretch it out till today, 2017, all of that violent up and violent down over those four years is just this tiny little blip. And I think that's where we are today with regards to Bitcoin and, and the entire cryptocurrency market. But if you, if you market. call it, if you, you don't have to hate Bitcoin to think it's overvalued, do you? I mean, I know I know it's kind of like you either love it and it's worth infinity mm -hmm. or you hate it and it's a bubble. That's kind of how, unfortunately, you know, sort of people post it. But the reality is that it could be anything, an asset class, lumber, Dutch tulips, whatever it might be. Justify yeah, to our audience why it's worth a 900% gain this year. Look, its its gain is totally irrelevant. The question is, how much is it worth? And at the end of the day, Bitcoin is nothing but a confidence game. That's end of game, and, and investors have to get confident with that. And by the way, every asset is nothing but a confidence game. Gold is nothing but a confidence game. What is it? Why does anybody own gold? Because they believe tomorrow somebody else is going to pay them more money for it. Gold is worth $8 trillion. Bitcoin's worth $150 billion. And by the way, it is by any measure a much better story of value than gold is today. You don't, you don't get nervous using that phrase, a confidence game? A Ponzi <laughs> scheme is a confidence game also, yeah, right? Yeah, everything is a confidence game. Facebook is a confidence game. And, you know, and by the way, Facebook IPO'd and then it was down, you know, 70 percent. So, you know, I have a word that I use to describe the tendency of markets to become bubbles and pop and then become bubbles again. The word that I use to describe that is capitalism. That's what we do. The government tries to tap it down, tamp it down. They're not very good at it. But, you know, I'm not spending a lot of my mind share thinking mm -hmm. about where Bitcoin is going to be tomorrow. I'm thinking about where the cryptocurrency marketplace is going to be in 20 years. And it's not going to be 300 billion where it is today. It's going to be tens of trillions of dollars. The, the people who are critical of the Federal Reserve and the central banks all over the world having printed money and, and done quantitative easing <laughs> point to cryptocurrencies and say they are a direct result of all of that. Do you have any thoughts on whether or not the, the loose money has created this phenomenon? Uh, I, I think there's, technology basically improves everything. And currency hasn't been improved for, you know, for literally hundreds and hundreds of years. So this is really, I think, the first major technological improvement that we've had in currency. And so, and by the way, people, when they say currency now, they're thinking of currency in the same way they thought of currency for the last hundreds of years. This is something completely new. You put a smart contract on top of uh, a digital, on, on top of uh, a blockchain currency, and you can now have that currency be anything. I have no doubt in a few years, I'm going to have the Lou Kerner coin, and I'm going to decide, you know, my coin's going to automatically leave a 22% tip every time I go in a restaurant, unless I really like or don't like it. Every, when I go into a gas station, I I, it won't allow me to buy gas unless every gas station I go to, uh, uh, everybody in their blockchain is for climate change. Yeah, right? well, That's you, what currency is going to become. Call it the, you could call it the, the kernel, <laughs> and we'd be all ears. Oh, <laughs> God. You know what? When you talk about all those competing currencies, Lou, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me after the French Revolution when there was all that horrendous inflation and, and there were competing currencies throughout the country, depending on who controlled the printing press, who had a stronger bank and therefore people believed in more. Um, <laughs> I, it just feels weird. Look, I totally I get that it feels weird. This is something totally new. It's the densest thing that I have ever gotten involved with. I first heard about it in 2013. I spent nine months looking at it and looking at it and never got it. So I appreciate why it's hard to get. But you're talking about currency as though it's the same thing that it has been for hundreds of years. When I get asked how many currencies can there be, I answer how many companies can there be? Do you ever say, wow, there are too many companies? Do you know how many companies got started today? Okay. There are too many. Okay, that's a new way to think about it. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it that way.